Is it rolling? Yes, it is. Okay, let's see here. You wrote this script as well as directed it, correct? I did. What inspired you to write this short film? Um, actually what inspired me to write this, uh, I, I wrote it a couple years ago and it's just kind of sat around. Um, when I wrote it, I think that uh, I was dealing with a lot of personal issues uh, as far as uh, religion and theology went. And um, it kind of let me deal with those personal, those personal issues and those personal demons uh, in a more creative way. So that's kind of where it came from. And the uh, inspiration for it actually came from, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, A Christmas Carol. and. Um, Dante's Inferno, so I wanted to mesh those two together, and I think that it succeeded pretty well in doing that. So what made you go back to the script and decide to produce it and make it happen? Um, I was actually going to uh, be directing a feature-length film that was the plan for this year, and um, the feature-length fell through, and uh, I had several people that um, were interested in making a movie like they, they had been loyal throughout the entire process and um, I kind of I, I, I took a step back and I was like you know uh, the, the feature didn't work out but I owe it to myself I owe it to the people that have been loyal to me through the process to make something so I started going back and looking through all the projects that I had and um, I, I settled on this one. I said, well, you know, this I, I had this and then there were a couple other projects and I was like, you know, the other ones were a comedy and uh, they just weren't really what I felt like doing at the particular moment. So I settled on uh, doing this one. Was this the first short film that you've made then? This was the first short that I have uh, personally directed um, that's over uh, a few minutes long. Um, that uh, I've done a lot of smaller commercial work and so forth, but this was the first short that I had done, and um, it was definitely a big learning experience. What did you learn during the process of making the short film? Um, what did I learn yeah. from the process? Um, I learned that uh, patience pays off. I, uh, uh, up until recently, I was always a very controlling personality. I had to be overseeing everything or I didn't trust that it was going to be done right. And um, taking part in this in this movie, uh, making this movie really taught me to trust that people can do their job. And uh, I, I learned to, uh, to seek the right people for the job. Uh, and, and an ongoing issue that we had was finding the right people for the right position um, and there was there was a lot of tension that came from uh, trying to find those people and eventually oddly enough after uh, the actual filming was done um, before we got into reshoots uh, that was when we actually found everybody that worked the best together and we were able to turn the reshoots out in an orderly fashion and it became awesome to have those people that I was working with. Um, Overall, I mean, overall, I can't say anything negative about any one person, um, the cast or crew. Uh, the cast was fantastic. Every single one of them uh, did fantastically. And the crew showed up. They uh, showed up on time. Um, they did what they were asked when they were asked. And uh, they, for the most part, kept a positive attitude. Um, uh, another thing I learned was uh, keep keep personal and professional separate when, uh, meaning that when you're having a bad day, not to come on set and uh, bring that negativity with you. Um, I had a very bad situation the day before our final day of shooting. That happened to be our, long our longest day of shooting. And um, so not only was I dealing with it being our longest day of shooting and the hottest day of shooting, but I had personal stuff that I had to deal with too. So um, it was just, it, it, it was a fantastic learning experience. Like there's nothing better that I can say about this movie than that I've learned as much as I did. <laughs> what are your hopes for the film? What would you like it to do? What, what are your goals for it? Um, well, the, uh, the hope at the moment is to uh, get it into the festival circuit um, by the end of the year. 
uh, we have to finish it first. Um, December 17th is the goal to have it completely done. And from there, start sending it off to uh, different um, uh, festivals and so forth. And hopefully, uh, it wins. I would love, I would love to get some uh, recognition for the directing. Obviously, that's my biggest uh, aspiration with it. Um, but editing uh, would be cool as well, and um, definitely for the cast. I mean, there, everybody in the cast deserves an award, whether, regardless of where it's from. I hope that. Uh, I really think that if the film wins anything, it'll definitely be for acting from the different cast members. Um, yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, what can I say about the individual actors and the jobs that they did? Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll start uh, at the end of the uh, list and go up. Uh, we'll start with Missy, who was played by... Uh, the ever-talented Kayla Krantz. Um, she, uh, I actually met her while filming um, a feature length last year, um, and we we became friends. And uh, quickly, I realized that she was somebody that I could trust um, professionally and could rely on. And uh, you know, I, it, she was originally going to be a part of the feature. And uh, when that fell through, she was one of the people that I contacted, and I was like, you know, it's not going to happen, but if you want to work on this, you're more than welcome to. And I gave her the option. I was like, do you want to play the wife, or do you want to play the whore? And she was like, the whore, for sure. Like, it didn't even take a second thought. And um, that's really what she, I mean, she, she thrives on playing characters that are not typical. Um, and I think that she does an awesome job fitting into each particular role. Next would be Mr. John Hoke, who um, was a, a bit of a, we'll say, a calculated risk um, in that uh, what you'll see is that John is very, very much a nice guy, very much clean cut. You can see that part of his personality when you look at him. Um, so to ask him to play the villain, to play a character that is of questionable character, um, he he didn't really slide into the role and he admitted that like he knew as soon as I offered him that he wasn't sure if he wanted to be that character or if he could be that character and I gave him some things to study um, and he showed up on set and the first day he showed up on set he was very uncomfortable you could tell it um, watching him there on set you could tell it watching him in the footage while editing it just it didn't suit him, but he he pressed on anyways. Um, by the time we did the reshoots, uh, he did uh, an incredible job. Um, in the final film, you, it's it's fascinating to me that you can actually see how much he improved day to day, uh, more so than anybody else in the cast. He improved day to day. And by the time we did uh, the last scenes and the last scenes and stuff, he did an incredible job. I couldn't have cast anybody better. Adrian Adrian played uh, the wife of Eric's character, and uh, what can I say about Adrian? Um, originally, I had another female cast in the role, uh, and she fell through. Um, so I had to find somebody in a pinch. I believe it was only like three weeks before we started filming and I needed a female to fill that role. Um, and my producer, Kara, who also did the makeup, um, she's like, well, my roommate wants to do it. And I'm like, I don't know your roommate at all. I don't really feel comfortable offering her the role. And she's like, well, come over and meet her. And I was like, all right. So I went over and I met her and she was extremely gung-ho. She really wanted the part. And that was awesome to me. That stuck out. And um, you know, the more I worked with her, uh, and the more that we did rehearsal and stuff, I was like, you know, this, uh, and I've, I've told her this, I couldn't have cast somebody better in that role than her because she did, she, she had such a natural, um, almost home, wife, motherly feel to her, uh, the way she carries herself, that she really fit well into the role better than 
she had been expected to. But what can I say about Eric? Eric played um, David Marquette, the main character. Um, Eric came in to audition for the feature length. Um, I don't know if this is the way you want them to be holding each other, but... <laughs> Do you want to see the photos of Eric and Adrian? Can you give me a minute? Yeah. I'm just finishing up. Can I zoom in on that face? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Can I zoom in on that face? That's like perfect expression. They're just going. That? They're going. Just that. Uh, and then last, uh, Eric, who played David Marquette, the main character. Um, Eric originally auditioned for the uh, feature length I was going to make, and he did a pretty uh, fantastic job. There wasn't much more I could ask for. Um, so when the, the short film came around, um, he was one of the first people that I called, and I said, you know, the feature length isn't going to work out. Would you like to be a part of this? And he, he jumped at the opportunity to play the main character. Um, and he, uh, he, he did a really great job. He fit the role. Uh, he did much better as a jerk than I thought he would. He, um, he uh, presented himself uh, in a manner that I really think people will hate his character, and that's what they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to feel bad for him. They're not supposed to uh, feel like he deserves anything. Um, but. Um, on the same side, by the end of the film, uh, he does a, a great job at making you feel sorry for him as well, and um, almost makes you like him a little bit. Um, like I said, overall, I can't say anything negative about the cast whatsoever, all of them, uh, including Troy, who uh, is not here as the robber, did a fantastic job.